before we can go into equations. So if you're keeping track right now, we're going to start chapter 3, and we'll be on 3.1 for the rest of our day. To start us off with simplifying expressions, firstly, I need you to identify that this thing is, in fact, an expression. Why is this an expression and not an equation? No equal sign. Good. So expressions don't have those equal signs. Equations do. So right now, we're, we're in the expressions zone again. Before we start simplifying full-on expressions, we need to talk about how to combine like terms. Here's how we're going to do this, because this is a major part of what we do in this class, is combine like terms. Firstly, instead of just rushing at combining like terms, I want to talk about what a term is, then I want to talk about what a like term is, then I want to talk about how to combine like terms. So we're going to build up to this. Oh my. Now, it looks scary at first, but don't worry, we're not going to be doing a whole lot with this. I'm going to teach you what terms are by looking at this thing. So we're going to talk about the word terms. When we say a term, I can ask you this question. Here's what I'm going to ask you in about 10 seconds. How many terms there are up here? Now, before you answer that, before you go there, there's like eight terms. Before you say something like that, I want to tell you what a term means. In an expression, a term means something that is separated by a plus or a minus, by a plus or a minus. So I want you to look at the pluses and minuses. Count how many things are separated by pluses and minuses. How many do you have? Four. four. Yeah, four. Yeah. Our terms up here are four terms. We're going to list them out. i got to tell you that the terms go with the sign that is in front of them. So let me do the first two examples for you. The first term that we have up here is 4y cubed. That's the first thing. So 4y cubed is a term. Can you tell me my next term? Okay, now it goes with the sign in front of it. It goes with the sign in front of it. So notice how that's a, there's a sign in front of that 3xy. We're going to consider that to be a negative 3xy. It goes with that term. Are you with me on this? Yes. Now, if you don't understand why, let me explain to you why. Okay, This is kind of an important concept because I don't want you just to assume that a minus means a negative. It doesn't. But here's what you could do. I'm never going to have you show this to me, but I want to show you why this works the way it does, why terms include the negative um, with them. Do you remember that instead of writing 4y cubed minus 3xy, I could write 4y cubed plus negative 3xy. Do you remember how you can change a minus into a plus negative? That says that that negative now is included with that term. You with me on that? Yeah. So that's why that negative goes with it. You're kind of doing this in your head when you say my next term is negative 3xy. You're kind of just cheating the problem a little bit and doing that in your head. So if you remember that the terms go with the sign in front of them, you'll be just fine. With that in mind, can you tell me the next term that I have, everybody? X. Good. And what's the final term? Good, it goes with the sign, so we get negative 9. You okay with the terms? Yes. Sweet, sweet. Now you're going to notice a difference between these types of these terms up here. We of course have four terms, but three of them are the same and one of them is different. Which one is the different one? Negative 9. Why? Because it doesn't have a variable. Right. So we have two different types of terms. We have what are called variable terms, and we have constant terms. The variable terms are named so because they have variables in them. So right up here, we're going to have our variable terms. Mm -hmm. 
a number all by itself without a variable is called a constant term. Now, the, the term variable means it can change depending on the number you plug in, right? That's what's variable. You can plug in whatever number you want. Does a constant term ever change? For example, no. is negative 9 ever going to change? No, because it's constant. Right. You, well, it, it, no matter what you plug in, the negative 9, there's nothing attached to it. It's not changing. So we call it the constant as in it doesn't change. Constant terms are just constant terms. There's not much we can really say about them, but we can say a couple things about our variable terms. Every variable term has a couple parts to it. There's the coefficient and there's the variable. Say coefficient for me. Coefficient. Good. Yeah, we need to pronounce that, that correctly. Coefficient. The coefficient, and we'll write this out, every, every variable term has two parts to it, the coefficient and what's called the variable part. Every variable term has a coefficient and a variable part. Well, those are three variable terms. I'm going to put one up here just for fun. What I'd like to do is talk about the coefficients and the variable part. So I've listed out four terms over here. Let's look at four, oh, you know what, I said x, I meant y. Let's say four y cubed, four y cubed. That's definitely a variable term, right, because it has a variable in it. The coefficient is simply the number in front of the variable. It's just the number itself. So the coefficient is the number that you're looking at right now. What's the number you're looking at right now? Four. four. That's the coefficient. It's just the number. The variable part is all the variable stuff. So what's our variable part in 4y cubed? Y. Y cubed. Y cubed, that's right. It goes with the cube. The number is the coefficient. Everything else, all the variable stuff, that's the variable part. Let's do the next one. Can you tell me what the coefficient is? Yeah, it does go with the sign. So that's going to be negative 3. And the variable part, folks? Good. Now, how about these two? Oh, you know what? Let me change this one. Let me make that negative x. Sorry about that. How about this one? That's just an x. Does it have a coefficient? One. Yeah, it has a hidden coefficient. When you say x, you have like one x. So when we say this, the coefficient is actually one, and the variable part is still x. So anytime you see a variable all by itself, it's implied that it has a coefficient of 1. Are you clear on that one? Yeah. Okay, so that means when we get to combine like terms and you see an x by itself, it doesn't mean 0x, it means 1x. That actually means something. You have to add that on there or subtract. And then finally, negative x. What's the coefficient for negative x, do you think? Negative 1. Very good. So negative 1. And the variable part is, again, x. So whenever we have no number up front, we imply that that's a 1, and we carry the sign with it. Rachel, you have a question? Why is it a negative x, not negative 9? That's, I, I was just putting another one up there, just for fun. This one didn't have anything to do with that. I just want to make sure you saw the negative x, OK? Yeah. The negative 9, we can't talk about that as a variable term, because it, it doesn't have a variable. So we just say that's a constant. It's just negative 9. Good question. Ladies and gentlemen, did today, did today make sense for you? Yeah, How many people feel pretty OK about this? Good, okay. I think I should With that in mind, if I put this on the board.
Can you tell me, everybody, take some time, look at that thing. Can you tell me how many terms there would be in this problem? Uh, yeah, that's the things that are separated by pluses and minuses. Uh, everybody here, what's your very first term, please? Good, so that right there, that's our first term. Can you tell me my second term? X. Okay, remember that the term goes with the sign in front of it. So it's negative x. goes with the sign. Uh, remember, that's because I can write a minus as plus a negative, so the negative is included with the term. Are you with me on this? Okay, so uh, let's keep on going. How about the, bless you, the third term? Negative negative yz squared. Great, you said the negative, right? Mm -hmm. Yeah. Good, okay. How about the next term? Plus and lastly, the last term is? Okay. Can you tell me which one of these is the constant term? Good. And the rest of them have variables, therefore they're var variable terms. What is the coefficient Coefficient of this term right there? What's the coefficient? Good. Somebody else, what's the coefficient of this term? Is it 7 or negative 7? It goes with the sign, so it's negative 7. Very good. You guys have the idea about the terms and the coefficients down? The next thing we have to determine is we know these things called terms. We know what coefficients are. The coefficients are just the numbers in front of our terms. That's all it means. We have variable terms. Those are the ones with variables. We have constant terms. Those are just the numbers. The only thing we haven't talked about is like terms. Because we're supposed to be combining like terms in this section, we've gotten terms. We haven't really got to combining yet because we have to talk about what like terms are first. So what in the world are like terms? Like the same. That's exactly right. In fact, we mean like terms as the same type of term. Here's how we determine whether two terms are considered like terms or not. It's really you look at the variable part. If two terms have the same variable part, what that means for you in like English, hope you're listening right now, is it means same variable with the same exact exponents. That's what a like term will be. It has the same exact variable part. Are you with me on this? Yes. Not just the same variable, not just the same exponent, same variable raised to the same exponent. That's what we're looking for. So when we talk about like terms, we're talking about terms that have exactly the same variable part, that's the same variables to the same powers. I'll write that down here also. The same variable part means the same variable raised to the same exponent. Let's see if we have this down. I'm going to put some examples on the board. What we're going to try to do is just identify some like terms up here. This says 13ab plus 4 minus 3ab minus 10. Before we even get going, I'm going to start asking you all these questions again to make sure you really are getting this idea down in your head. Firstly, ladies and gentlemen, how many terms are up here? Four. 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 Can you all identify there's four terms? Good. What's the coefficient of this term? Three. 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 Negative three. Which one? Negative, negative three. three. Okay, you guys say the ne if it's negative three, say the negative three. We got negative three. Now, how about the coefficient of this term? 13, 13. Good. By the way, these do not have coefficients since they're constants. Those are the constant ones. That you don't call them a coefficient. There's no variable to go along with that. What we're looking for now are like terms. Like terms have to have the same exact variable part. Basically, the same exact variables raised to the same powers. Do you see any like terms up here? 13, A, B, and negative 3, A, B. Okay. Are these two like terms? No. 
no, this has a variable. That didn't even have a variable. We're, what we're looking for are terms that have the same exact variable part. So the 13AB and what was the other one you said? Good, including the sign. So what we're going to do is start circling those with the sign in front of it. These two right here are like terms. By the way, any constant terms are automatically like terms. They're all the same. So constant terms are, have one class. Anytime you see just numbers like the 4 and the negative 10 over here, which we consider to be negative 10 because we could write the plus negative, those are automatically like terms as well. Let's do one more to really get the hang of this. I'll have you do one on your own. Then we'll talk about how to combine these things. First, are you okay that these are in fact like terms? Yes. yes. What we're looking for is the AB and the AB. Those match up. Yeah. Number, number. Those match up. Okay, count up the terms. Do you see how many terms we have? Six. Six? Six? You saw six? Cool, six terms. Let's go ahead and see if we have any like terms. Now, how we're going to start doing this is just going from the left to the right, circling the first term and see if there's anything in common with that. So, bless you. Let's go ahead and see if we have anything in common with 7y squared. Are there any like terms with 7y squared? No. What about this, the 4y? Yeah, but it's not a Okay, so it's not just that we have the same variable. It's that we have the same variable and it must be raised to the same exponent. Nod your head if you understand that. Got to be the, exactly the same variable part. Okay, these ones, man, those are not the same. So with, with the 7y squared, we don't have anything in common with that. Let's go to the next one. How about the 2xy? 2xy, is there anything in common with 2xy? Yes. 9xy. Well, it says 9yx. Yeah, but it's still it's interchangeable. Oh, why? Multiplication rule. Multi okay. More specifically, uh, there's a certain multiplication rule that says when I can uh, that I can change things. Inverse. 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 Not inverse. Flip flop. Uh, Starts with a C. Commutative property. Commutative property. Uh, okay. Do you remember that x times y and y times x are the same thing? Yes. So these really are like terms. You have the same variables raised to the same exponents. These are the same. These are like terms. Let's go ahead and let's talk about that negative 8. Is there anything with the negative 8? Negative 12. That's right. We do have the negative 12. Those, any, I said any numbers by themselves, any constant terms are automatically like terms. How about the negative 4y? Anything with that? No. No. No, we already talked about that. That's not the same as these. Not the same as this because this has an x and this one doesn't. It has to be exactly the same. With that in mind, why don't you give one of these a try on your own and then we'll talk about how to combine them. So I want you to be able to identify how many terms there are, then start thinking about the coefficients of these terms, what the coefficients are, and then I'd like you to circle those like terms or list them out if you prefer doing that, either way. talk about this thing. So how many terms do we have in total? Three. Five. Five. Five terms. We've got a couple constant terms, I see that. Hopefully you found that the four and what other constant term are like terms? Good. Those are like terms. 
Those go together. How about anything with the x squared? Do we have any like terms with the x squared? No. No, no these x's, those are not the same thing as x squared. Those are not like terms. We're going to find out in just a second that we are not able to combine those. However, we do have a negative 2x, positive 9x. Those things are certainly like terms. We have x and x. How many people got that exactly right? Good for you. Now, here's why we're talking about like terms. You see, terms can be combined. We can add them and subtract them from one another, provided they are like terms. So terms can be combined simply by looking for the like terms and adding or subtracting the coefficients of those like terms. That's really all you have to do. The term, the variable part, doesn't even change at all. All we've got to do is combine terms by combining the coefficients of like terms. So terms can be combined. by adding the coefficients of like terms. This is a beautiful thing because we can use the addition rule. That's very, very nice. Coefficients, that's a word we know. We just finished talking about like terms. Terms can be combined by adding the coefficients of like terms. That means what we do is we look for like terms. We take those coefficients, we add them together with the addition rule, and that's how we're going to combine them. Let's take a look at a couple very simple examples to start ramping this stuff up. Eventually today we're going to get to distribution again, which I kind of previewed that uh, in the first chapter, but we're going to be able to combine that with combining like terms and deal with some stuff that looks nasty, but it's not going to be that hard when we start putting all this together. That's going to be kind of nice. Let's use a C here. 6C plus 7C. 6C plus 7C. Well, firstly, are they like terms? Yes. How can you tell they're like terms? I like how you all say nine, nine. Well, it doesn't make sense, doesn't it? If you go into the grocery store, you have six carrots, and you have nine carrots. How many carrots do you have? Fifteen carrots. Fifteen carrots. Fifteen carrots. So if we have six C and we have nine C, and we want to add those together, they're like terms that can be combined, right? They both have C to the first power there. So if we have six carrots in one hand, nine carrots in the other hand, how many carrots do we have again? Fifteen carrots. Fifteen carrots. So, do we have 15 carats squared? Is that what we do? No. no. Right, so you wouldn't, you wouldn't go to someone and go, hey, I have six carats. How many carats do you have? Nine carats. Let's put them together. That way we get square carats. Would you do that? No. Have you ever seen a square carat? No. I've never seen a square carat. Unless so. it's a chocolate. It'd be pretty hard to chop it. It's carat squared. Have you ever done that? I don't have the time to do that yet. I'm sure that you do. I'm going to give you some more homework there, buddy. No, but the, the point is that if you're adding things together in real life, you typically don't say, I have one soda plus another soda, I have two square sodas. No, you just have two sodas, right? It's the same thing with our C's. With our variables here, you have nine C's over here, you have six C's over here. If you add that together, you have 15 C's. What we do to combine our like terms, we keep our variable part the same. All we really do, we look at the coefficients. What's the coefficient of this one? Six. The coefficient's just a number, folks. Six. What's the coefficient here? Nine. Add those coefficients together. And then we keep the variable part. That's how you add like terms. Okay. So you say, oh, okay, I do my coefficients, that's 15. My variable part was C, it stays the same. You do not add variable parts. That's what you, you change those by multiplication. We'll get to that later. You only add variable parts by adding coefficients. That's all you can do. Eight M minus thirteen M. Firstly, do we have like terms? Yeah. Yeah, of course we do. Yeah, they're both M's. We have eight M's here. We have minus thirteen M's. Guess what? If you do the addition rule, this is going to work out just fine. Remember how we just circled some like terms up here? I didn't. I didn't do it here, but I circled like terms up here. Yeah. If you circle your like terms, 
This will work even better when we have longer expressions here. What's my coefficient of this term? Eight. What's my coefficient of this term? Eight. That's why we include it with the sign there, okay? We say, oh, it's negative 13. We have to include that sign. Check it out. We, we, what, what do we do with those co coefficients here? Add. Add means addition rule. So all you need to do with like terms is use the addition rule over and over again when you're combining them. So we have 8m, we have minus 13 or negative 13m. Use the addition rule, those have different signs. You're going to subtract, subtract. keep the sign of the bigger number, negative 5. So our coefficient is negative 5. What's M. our variable part? M. M. Yep. When you're combining like terms, your variable part does not change. Okay, how about this one? 3a plus a. How many terms do we have? One. One terms? One like terms. Two terms? Okay. Do we have like terms? Um, no. Yes. 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 One like terms. One okay, well, wait a second, wait a second. What's this coefficient? Three. Three. Does this have a coefficient? No. no. One. Okay, let's argue about this a little bit. I like the, I like the enthusiasm. This is awesome. You know, every time someone argues about math, it makes me happy inside. <laughs> so, does this have a coefficient or not? Yes. yes. Is it shown? No. What is it supposed to be? One. Okay, so here's the deal. I have a lot of people, even when they get to math C, they do things like this. They go, oh, 3A plus A, they give me one of two, well, they give me one of three answers. One's the right answer, and two are the wrong answer. One way they do this, they go, oh, this is going to be 3A squared. Are we going to do that? We never change the variable part when you're combining, right? Only when you're multiplying. We haven't even got to that yet. Or they just say it's 3a again. They go 3a plus a. Well, there's nothing there. That has to be 3a again. Those are the two wrong answers. 3a and 3a squared. What do you think the right answer is going to be? Four. Four. Sure, this counts, right? If you have three apples plus one apple, you don't put the one out front, but that's one apple. How many apples do you have? Four. Yeah, you don't just keep adding a single apple and still getting three apples all the time, do you? You add an apple, you're supposed to get four apples. This is supposed to have a coefficient of one. We know we add coefficients together when we combine like terms, so you get four apples, or four a in this case. Okay, let's start building these up a little bit. How many people feel okay with these just two terms at a time sort of thing? Good, let's get going. We tried this one. Hey, first off, how many terms do we have? Three. Do we see any like terms? Yes. 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 Typically, what we do when we deal with the combined like terms type of problem, we start on the left hand side and we look at this term, we say, are there any like terms with this one? Are there? Yeah. And what we, so when we answer that question, we circle it with a sign, and then we circle any other like terms that we have along with it. So what's the like term with negative y squared? We're going to circle that number with the sign, or the term with the sign. Great. Can you combine those like terms like we did over here? Yeah. Negative y squared and 3y squared. The co what's the coefficient of this one? One. 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 Negative one. one. Very good. Negative one. What's the coefficient of this one? Three. Combine them and what do you get? 2y squared. 2y squared, that's right. Addition rule says negative 1, positive 3. Combine them, you get positive 2. Positive 2, y, y, y to the fourth. What, what do we have? Y squared. Y squared. It stays the same, it doesn't change. And then what's nice, since you circled them, once you combine them, just cross them off the list. That's way, that way you don't keep having that over and over again. Then we look for any other like terms. So the next term we see up there is a plus 7. Are there any like terms with plus 7? No. Oh, in fact, it's the only term left. So what do we do with that? Bring it down. Cool. Can I combine these two? No. Can I get something like 9y squared? No. That even wouldn't make sense, right? We know that in order to combine these, we have to have the same variable part. If I don't have a variable part, how in the world can I combine them? That doesn't make any sense. That's like saying this. 
Um, I have nine bananas and two dollars. How much do I have? Two dollars and nine bananas. Yeah, do I have, do I have 11 bananas? Do I have 11 dollars? Do I have 11 banana dollars? <laughs> that doesn't really work though, you see, if you don't have those like units, and the, the terms kind of, I'm sorry, the variables kind of act like your units. If you don't have like the same units, you can't add them together, it doesn't make any sense. So here would be like having two of something plus seven of something completely different, just the number. You cannot combine those unless you have the same variable part. So that's the answer? That's it. That's as far as you can go. Yeah. Let's do two more together. I'll give you about four to do on your own just to practice this, and then we'll start going on to how to multiply this stuff, and we'll see some interesting things that happen. Okay, you know the you know the drill now. How many terms? Four. four. We're gonna start with the four A. That means we're gonna circle that. <clears throat> and we're gonna look for any like terms with four A. Are there any like terms with four A? Are we gonna circle just thirteen A or the minus negative thirteen A? Negative. 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 Now the reason why I like to show you the circling is because of this. Uh, you don't have to reorder these things in order to combine like terms. Wherever they're at, just circle with the sign, and then you can do this in whichever order you really want to. So if you have 4a and negative 13a, you circle with the sign, just combine those the way they are, like that. Use the addition rule. How much are you going to get with the addition rule here? Negative 9a. Negative 9a. Do you always count negative 9a? Yeah. Different signs, subtraction down the bigger number. We're just going to put negative 9a and cross those things out. We keep doing this until we've combined all our like terms and then we're done. Do you see any more like terms? Cool, we're going to circle that number with the sign, circle the number with the sign. We'll combine that always with the addition rule when you're combining like terms. It's addition rule. We do different signs, subtract, sign bigger number. Negative six. Here's what you do with the negative six. Watch on the board. Remember, we're, we're kind of, I don't want to say we're tricking the problem, but we kind of are. We're treating these minuses, have you noticed this? We're treating these minuses like negatives. Mm -hmm. The reason why we can do that is because you could write it as a plus negative. That's legal, that's fine. We've been doing that the whole semester, well, whole chapter two. But because we can do that, we're going to consider this sign to be with that 13. So when you combine these, you can go, oh, here's negative eight, here's positive two, I'm getting a negative six. Well, we're going to write down, I know we say negative six in our head, we're going to write down, because it's negative, a minus six. Does that make sense to you? Yeah. We translate that back to a minus. So even though we're kind of pretending these are negatives for a while, we're kind of saving ourselves some work here. And when we put it back in our problem, this is not a negative, it's a minus six. If we get a negative, we translate this back to a minus. And we will understand that feel okay with that. Okay. Are we okay getting from 4a and negative 13a to negative 9a? Yes. Yeah. Yeah? Are we okay from getting negative 8, positive 2, to negative 6? Remember that's addition rule. You'll subtract 8 minus 2 is 6. Sign of the bigger number gives it to you a negative. Put down minus 6 because that was a negative 6 out of that. Okay, one more together, and then you get a few to do on your own. That's a good one. You're going to get a lot of this type of problem, and also with some numbers at the back end, in your Math A and Math C classes. You get stuff just like that. So let's see if we can go ahead and combine these. First place we look, we're going to look at the 5x squared. We're going to see if we have any like terms with 5x squared. So you tell me, is this a like term with 5x squared? No. no. How about this one? Yes. 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 So we circle it with the sign. How about this one? No. no. So just these two are like terms for the x squared part of this. How much are you going to get if you have 5x squared and positive or plus x squared? 6x squared. Good, that counts. So we get 6x squared. x squared, again, that does not change. We'll cross them out, signifying we've already added that. And then we have, let's see, we've got a negative 9x. I like it. Set it with a sign. What else do we have that's a like term? Negative 12x. Uh-huh. 
Combine them for me. How much you get? Negative 21 x 1 over 1 x. Why not positive? Oh, okay. So we're doing addition rule, right? When you combine like terms, you're addition rule. So a negative and negative, two sign, the same sign, we add them together, keep the common sign. You need to be getting the negative 21 here. If it's negative 21, minus 21x. That's what we got. We'll cross them out because we combine those two things. Now, quick question. Can you combine these two? Yeah. Can you keep no. going? No. 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 So if that happened, we really wouldn't have math, math, mathematics. Would not make sense anymore. You never have. If you could just combine those, you'd never have more than one term. It wouldn't work. So we can't combine things that aren't like terms. Otherwise, mathematics blows up in our face, and your paper starts burning. It spontaneous combustion, and I start crying. And you don't want that, right? I start kicking my dog to get so mad at you. Guys. No, I'm just kidding. I don't even have a dog. But I wouldn't kick him if I did. Uh, but anyway, this is, this is the, uh, the idea, is that we can't combine those if they're not like terms. If they are like terms, great. Just use those coefficients. Use the addition rule. Combine your like terms that way. Are you ready to practice some on your own? Yes. Let's try that. There you go. So try that circling the like terms using the addition rule on that. See if that works for you. I'll be walking around. If you need help, you just let me know.
Okay, let's see what happens on these problems. So we're looking for like terms. Of course, we can count the number of terms. We can see coefficients. And now we should be really getting proficient at like terms. So on this problem, what I'm looking at is a 6z, and I'm looking for any other z's that I have. Do I have any other z's? Yes. Yeah. yeah. How many z's is that? Seven. So when I combine them, I have a 6z and I have a 1z. How many z's do I get? Seven. Good. So when I combine those like terms, Seven Z. I'm going to cross those out so I don't have to worry about them anymore. Then I look for any other like terms. I have this number four, this plus four. I know any numbers are automatically like terms. So plus four and minus three, or positive four and negative three, using the addition rule. What are you going to get out of that? One. one. Positive one or negative one? Positive. positive. So what are you going to write? Plus one. Yeah, you're not just going to write. Look, you're not just going to write a one, right? That doesn't make any sense at all. If you get a positive 1, we need to know that we are combining like terms, and that positive 1 stands for a plus 1. So we have 7z plus 1. Raise your hand if you got that one right. Good. Yeah, you guys understand the fundamentals. That's great. So continuing on, I see a 9x. Any other like terms with 9x, folks? Negative 12x. Good. If I combine 9x and negative 12x, my coefficients are 9 and negative 12. I use the addition rule, different signs, subtract the sign, subtract the numbers, keep the sign of the bigger number, we get what? Negative 3x. Cross them out. Next thing I'm looking for is anything that matches up like term-wise with a negative 3z. Do I have anything with a negative 3z? Yes. yes. Yeah, we're always looking for the same variable parts. That's what's giving us those like terms. So negative 3z and positive 3z. Yeah. If you use addition rule, if you think about it, addition rule, those have different signs, right? You subtract. 3 minus 3 is? Zero. It doesn't matter about the sign of the bigger number because there's no bigger number. You have zero. So what do you put down here? Plus 7. Plus put. You could put plus zero z, right? Can you put this? Please watch on the board right now because this is where people make a, a mistake when they're first learning this. They go, okay, well if I have zero z's, don't I just put that? No. no, that's one. No. No. How much z's is that? One. one. Okay, it can't be mo mean both one and zero, can it? Because here it means one. It can't mean zero here if it's zero. Does that make sense to you? Yeah. Yeah. Can't mean both. So if you have zero z's, you do this. You can do that, but you go. Well, we're not going to Oz or anything. How much is zero? <laughs> just joking. How much is zero z's? How much is uh, that? Nothing. Zero. Nothing. nothing. Yeah, remember, this is zero times z, right? Whatever you put in here, you multiply it by zero. Zero times anything is zero, right? With me? Yeah. You can put the zero, <coughs> but does the zero do anything? No. Do you have to put anything? No. no. These things are just gone. They, when you add the opposite of a number or the opposite of a like term, it's going to create a zero. You don't actually have to put the zero unless you really want to. But at the very end, we're not going to have anything in that space. So we're going to have no z's. No z's there. And then we go, okay, we, we take care of that. Is there anything else? Plus seven. Seven. Yeah, whatever I haven't crossed out. I look for like terms. If it's a, just a term by itself, it gets added on to the very end. And we're done. So what happened to the z's? They're gone. They simplified to zero. OK, moving on. That was a good one. I hope you guys got that one down. Moving on, we got a couple r's up here. I see a negative 2r, and that matches up with what on this? Negative 2r and negative 8r will combine using addition rule. So that's going to start us out. That's gone. Next up, I look for my next term in line. I have a plus 7x. I circle the term with the sign. X. X, OK. So I'm going to circle that with the sign. I've got 7x. I've got x. That gives me 8x. Yeah, plus 8x. Plus 8x. OK, so I'm not just going to write things like 
like 8x like that, right? That doesn't make, that really doesn't work well yeah. for us. We want to make sure that if, we're, if we say positive in our head, we really do have a plus when we're combining like terms. That's gone. And then anytime we have those numbers, they're automatically like terms. Negative 12 plus 8, negative 12 and plus 8 give us? Negative 4. four. four. And we're going to write R. Minus four. Minus 4. Good. Remember, we say negative, but we're kind of tricking the problem a little bit. We're doing this because you could write a plus negative, and you can go back from plus negative to a minus. That's why the negative translates back to a minus. That's why that works. Can I combine these? Nope. How about these? Nope. No. Anything else? No. No, no like terms, you're done. This is kind of a good one too, right? Yeah. You have to really be watching yourself on this one. So I'm looking at 3x squared y. Nice. Let's see what's the like term. Is it this one? Yeah. Oh, no. 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 They're, they're close, right? I mean, look at that. Squared y. There is a square in both. There's an x, there's a y in both. But this x is being squared, this x is not. Yeah. This y is being squared, this y is not. So these are not like terms. These are not like terms. These ones, those are like terms, though. So you have the x squared y at the very end. Notice how the variable part is identical in both of those situations. So we circle both those. How much is 3x squared y and negative 2x squared y when I combine those? Positive x squared y. Do you have to write 1x squared y? No. Should you write 1x squared y? No. Is it wrong? No. It's technically technically not wrong. Are you ever going to see it in a math book? No. Answer is no. You know what? When we mean one of something, we write it like that. That means one x, right? Yes. Didn't it? Yes. And this means one z. If we want one x squared y, we really don't need the one. You're never going to see it. You don't need it. So x squared y implies there's only one of them. That's so it helps you. You can put it though. You can put it but on your final answer. I want to see that. Okay. Uh, okay. Just because I don't want you to get in the habit of thinking that this means zero, mm -hmm. I want you to notice that this means one. If, if you have to write the one, then in your head there's something different between this and that. Does that make sense to you? Yeah. I have to have them be the same thing in your head. So those are gone. And then here we get the negative 9xy squared. We also have another xy squared there. We add those together, negative 9 and positive 4 gives us how much, folks? Good, so we're going to write the minus. Yeah, I was just talking about that. The answer is, at the end of your problem, no, it's not okay. It's not okay, because I, I do need you to notice there is no difference between this and that. Um, so it, like I was saying, if you have to write this, it means there's a difference in your head between this one and that one, I can't have that take place. It's got to be the same. Can I combine these? Nope. You're done. That's as far as you go. How many will feel okay with what we just talked about? Good. Very good. If you can do these, you're going to be okay for the rest of our chapter three as far as combining like terms. That's, that's good news. Very good news. Now, for the rest of our time, we're going to talk just a little bit about multiplication. I'll also explain to you why we don't put the one in front of a term like that. Let's multiply. Let's say that you had some four x's and you, you had five of them. Instead of wanting to add up, 4x plus 4x plus 4x plus what? Five times. We want to do the multiplication version of this. How in the world can we multiply a number times a variable? Or a number times uh, a term with a variable part? The answer is, I'm going to show you back with some multiplication rules that this is possible just by looking at the coefficients again. Do you remember that multiplication is not only commutative, which means you can switch it around, it's also associative, which means I can group it however I want. Do you remember that? So instead of having 5 times 4x, which really means 4 times x, I really could group this, instead of the 4x, I could group the 5, 4, couldn't I? So here I could do, instead of 5 times 4 times x, I could do 5 times 4 times x. That's legal to do. That's, that's the associative property. Then it would just be 20x? Why would it be 20x? Because the x is on the outside. Yeah, okay. So how much is the 5 times 4? 20. It's 20. 
So this would be the same thing as 20 times x. How much is 20 times x? Yeah, we usually don't write 20 times x, we just write 20x. <coughs> now, of course, I showed this to you to prove that it's right, but do you have to do this every time, or can you just look at this and get straight to here, do you think? Yes. Sure you can. You go, hey. Yeah, why, why can't we just do that? Why can't we just say 5 times 4x? Well, that's 20x. And the answer is you can. This is the reason why you can. You can reassociate every single time. That means whenever you multiply a constant times a variable term, all you have to do is multiply the coefficient. You with me on this? Let's do a couple more of these things and then we'll call it a day in about five minutes or so. Let's try this one. Seven times four A. Ladies and gentlemen, how much do you think that's going to be? Good. The A's not going to change, right? That's not becoming squared or anything, nothing crazy. We're just going to have 28. A, yeah, we multiply that constant times that variable, specifically the coefficient, and we're good to go. Does it matter the order in which you multiply? No. So if I take 8x times 2, how much is 8x times 2 going to be? Perfect. Do you suppose it work with, works with negatives as well? Yeah. Yes. Negative 6, notice that's a negative 6 out front, not a minus 6, a negative 6. Negative 6 times 9y, how much is negative 6 times 9y, what do you think? 4y. Why is it negative? Okay, so you need to realize that we're going to be changing back and forth on our rules that we're using. Right here, we're using multiplication rules. That's why they're getting the negative 54, right? That's why we're not doing, oh, sign of the bigger number, all that stuff, because this is not addition. So here we'd be using multiplication rules, then we combine like terms, we're, we're switching back to addition rules. Are you with me on this? You'd be really good at that, because the signs are what people mess up. So of course, we're going to have 54y. It's definitely going to be negative, because we had a negative times a positive. How about 3 times negative 4z like this, folks? How much is that going to be? Can you tell me? 12. 12z. 12 okay. Definitely have the negative, though. Make sure we get that. Let's try a couple more. Show you why we don't put the 1 out front, and we'll be done. <coughs> What's this one mean? Is it still multiplication? Yes. Yeah. Yeah. It's got those parentheses right next to each other. This is a negative 2. That's a constant. That's a constant term. Times, what's the coefficient here? Negative 1. 1 or negative 1? Negative 1. If it's negative 1, say negative 1. Yeah, we've got negative 1 here. If we multiply these things, we're multiplying negative 2 times a negative 1. we got 2. Positive or negative? Positive. 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 Why? Because the negative and the negative were multiplying there using that rule. How about negative 3 times negative 4y? Everybody, how much is that? 12y. How much is 1 times x? 1. How much is 1 times 7? 7. Do you do this when you write 1 times 7? Do you write 1, 7? No. No, that would be 17, right? You don't keep writing 1 times 7, do you? No. No. 1 times x is x? 1 times 7 is 7, right? No, 1 times x. What? 1 times x. Yeah, right. What's 1 times 7? What's 1 times x? So if we turn in our homework and we have a 1, uh, we're going to get it wrong? I'm probably not going to mark you down in your homework, right? But you're not going to see the answer in the back of the book, are you? And you're probably not going to put that in your test, because then I'll be like, yeah, they really don't understand what's going on here. So yeah, I probably will mark you down on a test or something. Just because when you do this, you go 1 times 7, 7. Don't pick up it. We've got a couple minutes. 1 times x, it is x. In fact, if you wanted to do 
one x like this, one x like that means one times x, right? Yeah. This is yeah. what that means. So one x means one times x means x. Same thing would happen in this case, ladies and gentlemen. If you wanted to do um, negative one x, negative one x actually means negative one times x. What's negative one times x? Negative it's negative one. x. It's just like doing negative one times five. Negative one times five, you're gonna, not gonna put negative one five. You gotta keep writing that, you're gonna put negative five. For the same reason, that's why we don't write the one in front of those. One times anything gives you that anything back again. Negative one times anything gives you negative of that anything that you put in there. That's what the X stands for in this case. Some people understand why now we don't really write the one. Like I said, write the one. Write the one on the one. Write the one. Well, we don't write the one. Whatever. Did today make sense for you, ladies and gentlemen? Yes. Yeah. Good deal. So let's get started. Hey, do you remember a long time ago, I told you, this is something you might not use now, but in about a week or so, I'm gonna, two weeks or so, I'm going to show you how to apply this and you're going to be using it for the rest of your math lives. you remember that? It's called distribution. We're going to kind of go over distribution again. Otherwise known as a distributive property. Now, here's what the distributive property said for you. It said if I had a number and it was multiplied by some quantity inside of some parentheses being added or subtracted, like we have up here. I told you there was two ways to do this. I told you most of the time we're going to be using order of operations. And what we do here is just do the 4 plus 3, you get how much? And then we multiply that by 2, and what's our final answer here? Are you guys alive today? Yeah. Okay, let's get going. You get 14, are you with me? Yeah. Now, I also gave you another option or another way that you could get the same answer. And the way that you could get the same answer was, if I took this number and I multiplied it by 3, then I add it and multiply it by 4. Notice the 2 is being multiplied by 3, the 2 is being multiplied by 4. If I do that, I should and will get the same exact answer. So let's see if that works. Uh, everybody multiply wants to the 2 and 3 and the 2 and 4 and yeah. then add those two? Right, so we have 2 times 3, we also have 2 times 4, and then we're going to add them. Okay. So distribution says this, whether you add first or multiply first doesn't matter as long as you multiply by every term inside of your parentheses. Let's see if it works out the same. Uh, what's our 2 times 3? 6. Plus eight gives us 14. Eight, exactly what we were just talking about. It will give you the same answer. Now, a lot of you were wondering back then, you're like, well, Mr. Leonard, why in the world would you even do this? Why can't you just add 4 plus 3, get 7, and multiply by 2? That's exactly what we would do every single time if we had just numbers. Question? Two times four. Yeah, the two times, it has to go to both of them. So we're taking the times the first one and the second one. Anybody else have a question on, on this part? Because I have to have you be clear here before I go on. Richard, if you're okay with this distribution. Good, all right. So, like I was saying, you were probably wondering why we even do this when we could just add 3 plus 4, get 7, multiply by 2, and get 14. That's what you would do if you had numbers every time. However, a lot of times you're going to have variables. And this is where the distribution, uh, distributed property really shines, is when I have that. So I'm going to give you this in general. This works every single time. <coughs> You have a number or any expression outside of parentheses. So in general means without any numbers up there. So just using variables. We can distribute anything we want to. Here's the way you do it. Please watch closely up here. I need to make sure that you really get this before we go any, any further. You can't see right now? We can't see. How about this? Make it better? If you look up here, we took the 2 times the 3, and we also took the 2 times the 4. In general, that's the way you do distribution. You take whatever value is out here. In our case, it's A. We take A times our B, our first term. 
And then we take our A times our C. The sign in here is typically what you're going to get over here as well. So if we're doing A times B, we're also going to add A times C. So just like here, instead of A, B, and C, we had 2, 3, and 4, we're going to do the A times the B and the A times the C. Do you guys see the similarity between this example and the previous one? Yeah. Now, we can't go any further with this. We just have A, B, and A, C. But this is the way we do distribution all the time, which is kind of nice. Here, here. We multiply the outside term times each of the inside terms. We're going to start off slowly. We're going to do this step by step. I'll show you exactly how to do it. Then I'll give you some shortcuts once we really understand this. Would you like that? Yeah. Okay, so first comes like the real nitty gritty math stuff where we, I teach all about how this works exactly and then I'm going to show you ways we can shortcut it. This problem illustrates why we even have the distribu distribu distributed property. Here we could have added these. Can you add 4 plus x? No. Are they like terms? No. Then can you add them? No. If they're not like terms, you can't add them. So we can't even combine these. The only way to get rid of the parentheses in this case is through distribution. Are you with me, folks, on why we even have distribution? Otherwise, you couldn't go any further. You'd just be done. So in our case, we're going to follow this along. Just like we did the 2 times the 3 and the 2 times the 4, we're going to take the 2 times the 4. We've got a plus sign, so we're going to write a plus sign. And we're going to do the 2 times the x. As long as you're taking the outside factor times each of the inside terms, you'll have this right. You just got to make sure your multiplication is correct. So let's do our multiplication here. What's our first term going to be? A plus how much? Two. With an x? No. No x? Because you're multiplying the x. So what's two, two times, times x? Two x. Two x. Two x. Two x. Yeah, we got two x. Two times x is two x. This still means two times x. Can you combine those? Yeah. No. no. Can you get like ten x? No. 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 This is like the eight dollars and two starts with x. Xylophones. Like eight dollars and two xylophones. Add those together. What do you get? You still have eight dollars on two xylophones. That's it. So we're done. That's as far as we can go. That's how our distributive property works. I'd like you to try this a couple times, just to make sure you get this understanding down. Okay. Remember what we're doing, we're taking the outside factor times each of the inside terms. I'll be walking around. If you're not really clear on what's going on, please let me know. A lot of times what people do to show what you're distributing, they'll go ahead, they'll circle this number out front. They'll say, oh, that's what I'm distributing. This is what I'm distributing here, is that 2 and that 9, respectively. Uh, the reason why we do this is because when we get into some negatives, you always want to distribute with the sign. That's very, very important. So we're going to get into this habit right now of circling the number out in front of our parentheses to make sure that's what we're taking in. Are you with me, folks? Yeah. You sure? So let's go ahead and distribute. Remember, when you're distributing, it has to go to not just the first one, but also the second term. So when we do this, we're going to get 9 times y. And then we'll get our plus. 
9 times 2. Would you raise your hand if you got exactly that on your paper? Good. Let's simplify this a little bit to actually do the math on it. 9 times y gives me how much? 9y. Plus? 18. Can you combine those? No. That is as good as you can do. So this is our answer. Okay, last one I have up here. We'll circle the 3, we'll circle that number with the sign in front of it. Now, of course, it's positive, so it doesn't have a sign. We'll multiply that by both of them. So the first thing we should get is 3 times 4a. Do you have 3 times 4a? Yes. Now that we know how to multiply those, that's not a problem. And then we'll have our plus sign, 3 times 1. We'll just take our factor out here, times our term in there. And we'll get how much? 12a. And? 3. 3. Plus 3. Good. They're not like terms. You can't combine them. You're done. Would you raise your hand feel okay with what we're doing so far? Um, the 3 times 4a, you can, you can times that, though? You can add? I don't, I don't understand. Because you, you, you said they're not like terms or whatever. But. Right. When you're multiplying, we didn't really have that situation. From last time, we did, um, we did 4 times like 6x, if you remember. I said the reason why we can multiply these two things together is because of the associative property of, of multiplication. What we said is this is multiply and that's multiply. Multiplication doesn't really care how we group it. So really we could reorder this and do instead of 4 times 6 times x, I could do 4 times 6 times x and it's the same thing. I can regroup that. Then we get the 24 times x or 24x. So basically in layman's terms, yeah, you can multiply numbers of those. So it could be 6 times 4x, too? Could you switch it like that? Or no? Oh, yeah, absolutely. Yeah, okay. 6 times 4x means it's the same thing because it's commutative, right? The 6 yeah. and the 4 doesn't, that doesn't matter. That's different than addition. If you try to add 4 plus 6x, yeah, see, that's what different story. Time, time, different story. Time, time. That's like terms, okay? So if we don't have like terms, you cannot combine them. You can't add them or subtract them. Um, the only thing you can do is, if you have multiplication, that's where they don't have to be exactly the same. That's a good question. Yeah, good question. Any other questions before we get going? Okay. I'm going to make sure you are so good at this that it's not even funny. Uh, the reason is because you're going to eventually get to Math C, and some of you might actually be in my class if you dare to take me again. <laughs> if you dare. And you're going to be doing this right from the first week of school all the way through the end of the semester. You're going to be doing problems that look exactly like this. And I'm still fighting people who really weren't taught the right way or really didn't have the concept down. Maybe they were taught the right way. They just forgot how to do it. I fight that all the way through Math C. I fight that all the way to Calculus. So I make sure when I teach this class, you guys are 100% on this. And if you're not, I ain't going to pass you. So you've got to be 100% on distributing this type of stuff. Not just if you understand what I just said. I'm not going to pass you if you can't do this. You've got to be able to distribute this correctly. So I'm going to make sure you guys know it today and know it good. You ready for it? Here's how we distribute. Just like from before, we circle the number in front of it and we take it to both of our terms. We're going to do that here. Here's where people make a mistake. Okay? What people do is they go, oh, I'm distributing the 4. That's not entirely true. You are distributing 4, but notice how it's a negative 4. That number negative 4 has to go to both terms. So while here we have number plus number, that's what we got. We're going to have number plus, but that negative is going to be distributed. We will end with a minus sign on the second term, I, I promise you. We have to make sure that we're distributing the number with the sign. That's why we circle that number with the sign in front of it. So we're not just distributing positive 4, we're actually distributing negative 4. Raise your hand if you see the difference there. In the back, yes? Okay. So we're distributing negative 4 here. It does get multiplied by both terms, so we'll do negative 4 times 2a. You can show it like that if you'd like. Negative 4 times 2a. Plus, because we had a plus sign. We're not going to have 4 times 3. What are we going to have times 3? Negative, Negative 4. Negative 4 times 2a. Negative 4 times 3. Now we get to do our multiplication piece by piece. So tell me something, folks. Negative 8a. Yeah? 
plus negative 12. Wait, plus what now? Negative 12. Plus negative 12. Did you guys see yeah. the negative 12? Mm -hmm. yeah. Here's the last problem. Last problem is that plus negative, we're never going to leave our problems like that. Never, ever, ever should you ever have those two signs next to each other when you're done with the problem. Can you, can you think about what that plus negative actually becomes? What do you think? Why minus? Yeah, it's like going the opposite way of what we've been doing this whole semester. So do you remember this, how when we had like negative 7 minus 6, we do something like negative 7 plus negative 6. Do you remember that? Yeah. Can't you go the other way? Yeah. Let's go the other way. If we have plus negative, let's just change that to a minus. So from here, we can say this is negative 8a eight, eight minus 12. Negative 8a minus 12. You have to change it. Because you never leave two signs next to each other. You always write it with one sign. So when you have this plus negative, it's understood that's not really appropriate. We will write that with one sign at the end. Let's do one more together. I'll give you a couple of you on your own to make sure you get this, and then we'll move on. folks. Tell me the number that we are distributing, please. Three. Good. Not just three, negative three. I want you to circle the negative three. Do that for me right now. Circle the negative three. How many things, how many terms are we multiplying by negative three in this case? Two. Good. Both of those inside. So let's go ahead and show that. We'll do negative three times seven y. Do you all see where the negative 3 times 7y is coming from? Yes. Okay. Then what are we going to have? Negative. negative. What, what about that? That minus is still there, right? Yeah. Mm -hmm. Minus. Okay. We have a minus there. And then what do we have? Negative, negative three, 3 times, times 5. So negative 3 times 7y minus negative 3 times 5. Let's do the math now. So what's our negative 3 times 7y? Can you all tell me negative 3 times 7y? What is that? Y. Okay. Then we're going to have minus, what's negative 3 times 5? Negative, negative 15. 15. Tell me something. Wouldn't that be positive instead of negative? Sure. So should I leave it as minus a negative? Plus. We're going to make that plus. That's just like we did before. Minus a negative becomes a plus. Can I combine these, folks? No. no. They're done. As far as you can go. Now, I would like to show you something here. <coughs> One second. Is it possible? To, well, firstly, how many people understand exactly what we just did? You're fine with it. Good. Okay. Good. Now, I want you to look at something. I'm going to teach you right now a shortcut. Are you ready to see the shortcut? You ready? Shortcut. You got. You got to understand this part first. The shortcut. <laughs> Here's a shortcut. Shortcut says, if I pretend that these are individual terms, I can multiply our outside number times each term, and it will give me exactly what I want at the end. The sign, you've heard me say this a lot. The signs will take care of themselves. Here's what I mean. Watch me up on the board and follow me along, OK? This is negative 4, true? This is positive 2a. What's negative 4 times positive 2a? That's exactly what we have here. Now, this is, this is the important one. What's negative 4? Ignore this for a second. What's negative 4 times? We're going to consider this to be not plus 3, but positive 3. We're going to, remember how we did that a while back? We kind of tricked the problem a little bit. We considered that uh, to be a positive. So what's negative 4 times positive 3? What do you think? Negative 12. And we put, instead of negative 12, we put minus 12. We change it back to a negative. The reason why this works is because you can change plus negative to a minus. That's why this works. So if we treat this as step by step, we can actually do this mathematics without showing all this stuff. 
we just let the signs take care of themselves. We think about it like negative 4 times positive 2a, negative 8a. Negative 4 times positive 3, negative 12. We're just writing minus 12 instead. Do you guys think you can do that? That was dead silence. What do you think? Sure. Yeah. If you can't, stick with this. That's fine. This works every time. If you can, if you want to do a shortcut, then you can just distribute like this. Does it work with the next one? Let's find out. Let's see if we can go directly from here to here without these intermediate steps. What's negative 3 times positive 7y? Negative that, one. that works. What's negative 3? Here's what we do. Negative 3 times the negative, negative five. positive 50. Right. So we're going to do not 5, but negative yeah. 5. So negative 3 times negative 5 negative gives us a positive 15. 15. Positive. So for positive 15, we write plus 15. Are you seeing the connection here? Yeah. Mm -hmm. Good. That's Try. Better. I think so. That's why I like teaching this this way. This way causes a lot of steps, and when we get to big time problems, it just takes too long. Uh, and, and this is where people make mistakes right here and right here. So I don't I don't like that. Um, I like showing it to you where you just take this number with a sign times each of these terms with the sign. Here's the big deal. Can you want to hear the big deal? Some of you guys are zoning out already. I need your full attention. The big <laughs> deal is that you cannot forget about that sign. If you forget about that sign, you're 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 junk. You're not gonna. You're not gonna get. The, you're not junk. The problem's junk. <laughs> you guys are all special human beings. <laughs> I'm talking about all sorts of weird stuff today. You should watch my videos from earlier today. We had shifting going on. When you say shift a whole lot, it sounds like something else. And we had all sorts, of, all sorts of shift going on. In my class. <laughs> so here's the big deal, though: is you cannot forget about these signs. If you're going to multiply negative three times five, it better be negative five. You have to have that sign with the number. That's the key. Why don't you give that a try on a couple of these problems? So we're taking the factor outside the parentheses with the sign times each of the terms inside the parentheses with their signs. As long as we multiply them with their signs, they'll take care of themselves. We don't even have to worry about it. It's kind of nice. So let's look at the first example. What number are we distributing, folks? Six. six. I'm going to circle the six. It's going to one. The first one, the second one, or both of them? Both. So we'll do this piece by piece. I'm going to show you both ways for now, but eventually I'm just going to stick with the quick way. Okay? So the first way is you go 6 times 5 minus 6 times y. You should get 30 minus 6y. How many people got 30 minus 6y? Good. Could you have gotten there directly from here? Sure. 6 times 5 is 30. 6 times negative y, you have to consider negative y, is negative 6y. That's where we put the minus 6y. Nope. So you can't go directly from to there. On the next one, we've got negative 3 times 5x minus 8. We'll do the negative 3 times 5x. Negative Sure. We can do that in one piece if you want, as long as you consider it to be negative 3 and positive 5x. You do negative 3 times positive 5x, that's negative 15x. And we do negative 3 Five. times... Was it, is it, are we going to look at this as 8 or negative 8? Negative negative eight. Eight. So it has to go with the sign, like this. Negative 3 times negative 8 gives you... Positive 4. You've got to be real good with your signs, don't you? Real good with your signs. So we're going to put what down here? 
plus positive 24. Yeah, we don't just put 24. Okay, it's positive, yes, but what we mean by positive is that you can add it. Uh, yeah. You're adding to it. Okay, so we don't just leave it 24, we put plus 24. I'll show you the other steps if you really want to see them. Here you can show negative 3 times 5x minus negative 3 times 8. That's going to give you negative 15x minus negative 24, and that changes to the plus 24. So either way you want to do that is fine with me at this point. Would you raise your hand feel okay with doing these, these two? Good. We're going to try a couple more. I'll give you some more to do on your own. Hey, do you suppose anything changes if I have more than one variable term inside of my parentheses? Can we still do it? Yeah. Yeah, why not? All distribution really means is take whatever is outside of your parentheses, number, variable, whatever, and multiply it times each term inside of your parentheses. That's really all it means. So what number are we distributing here? Five. As long as we make sure it goes to both these terms, we're fine. So let's do this using the shortcut method like we're trying to learn here. We'll take our five times our two x. What's our five times our two x? And then we're going to think of it five times what? Negative four. Negative four. Good. It goes with the sign. Remember, terms always go with their sign. That's how we can remember this. Terms go with their sign. So five times negative four y gives you how much? Twenty-one. Twenty or negative? negative? Negative. So if it's negative twenty, what am I going to write here? Minus twenty. Minus twenty. Y. Don't forget the y. Hey, can you combine these? Yes. No. 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 Why or why not? They are the same variable. What makes like terms, like terms. Same variable. Same, variable. Same, variable. same variable raised to the same exponent. That's what makes oh, them like same terms. Exact letter. Yeah, oh. same variable. I think it gave you the apples. Did I give you the apples and oranges? It'd be like saying you have 10 apples minus 20 oranges. What do you get? No, you get 10 apples and 20 oranges. If you have 10 apples and minus 20 oranges, 10 apples and 20 oranges, can you combine those? You get negative 10 of oranges? That doesn't make sense. Yeah, we can't, we can't do that, right? This is not going to make, this is not going to make this. Here's what people often do for a mistake. They go, oh, yeah, sure, negative 10 xy, right? That's usually the mistake they would make. If that's the case, tell me something. Um, what would that would be the same thing, right? Yeah. Wouldn't it? These would these have to come with different answers, otherwise they'd be written exactly the same. So you'd have to have a difference between this and this in your mind somewhere. If these both give you the same thing, one of them's wrong. One of them's wrong. And it's it's of course this one does not combine to make negative ten x one. Okay, last thing we got to talk about before I give you some on your own again. Negative parentheses x y. What in the world? What's that even mean? Thanks a lot, Mr. Ray. I know. What a jerk I am today. Make you sit through math class, make hilarious <laughs> jokes that you all laugh at. I mean, what a horrible class. What are you supposed to do here? Like yeah, skip it. <laughs> Done. That's what I usually do. Can you tell me something? Whenever you have a negative like this, what numbers imply to be there? One. So if you have like a negative one, that's really what we're distributing is a negative one. If we distribute negative one, let's let's watch what happens here. Negative 1 times x, how much is negative 1 times x, please? Good. Now, how much is negative 1 times positive y? How much is that? Negative y. I'm going to put, instead of negative y, I'll put minus y. We change that back to a minus. That's, we're kind of tricking the problem a little bit. Minus y. You all okay with that? Yeah. So essentially, what does this negative do in front of your parentheses? Did it change the values? It didn't change the x and the y, it just changed the signs. Positive x became negative, plus y became minus y. 
A negative in front of your parentheses will simply change every sign in front of your parentheses. So basically, this just changes the sign. Basically just changes the signs. Okay, I'm going to give you a few to do on your own. Let's work through these. Uh, if you need help, raise your hand. I'll come around and I'll help you out with this. There you go. Okay, we're about to get started up here. So we're distributing, we're taking the value of outside of our parentheses times each of the terms inside of our parentheses. Now, first one, we're distributing the six. It's just got to be multiplied by both of those terms. As long as you take the number with the sign and you multiply those two things, the signs will take care of themselves. We don't have to even worry about it. We just write whatever we get when we multiply in our head. So our six times our four x. What's six times four x? Four x. So we're going to write out 24 x. Then we multiply the 6 times what? 11. 11? Minus 11. Minus Negative. Seven. Negative. Negative. So you've got to think about that like with the sign. So here, <coughs> we ignore our 4x for a second. We do 6 times negative 11. You get how much out of that? Negative. 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 So we put minus, minus 66. Minus. Yeah, that's exactly right. How have we got that right? Okay, next up, we'll distribute our negative 4. Again, we circle the number with the sign. So when we distribute negative 4, negative 4 times positive x, you have to be getting negative 4x there. Did you get negative 4x? No. Yeah. Usually, honestly, almost everybody gets the first one right. Everybody gets the first term right. That, that one's not the one where people mess up. 
usually this is going to work out just fine. You get negative four x. It's typically the second one that people people mess up on a little bit because of the signs. Plus eight y. Plus. Would you explain why it's going to be plus eight y? Two negative. 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 Good. We're, this is definitely a negative. This we're considering to be a negative. We're kind of cheating the problem a little bit. One last time on why this is possible. It's possible because you can write this as a plus negative. Since that's possible, we're treating that like a negative 2y. We're just not showing those steps. So negative times negative is certainly a positive. Can I combine those? No. Okay, moving on. Negative 5. We'll distribute this to both of these terms. Negative 5 times negative 2y, what do we get? Positive 10y. Positive 10y. Yeah, it's got to be a positive. A negative times a negative is a positive. Next, we'll have negative 5 times positive 5. This negative is why we're circling that number with the sign to take that negative with minus us. 25. Minus 25. We're good to go on that. Which means you have to get both, all three of those right. Good for you. Wait a second. I didn't show you one with three terms. Is it still possible? Yeah, sure. Yeah, you're just extending the concept. If we have two here, we multiply by both of them. We have three here, we multiply by all three of them. That's the only difference here. So when we distribute this, tell me the first term we're going to get, please. Negative eight yeah. Good. Next term we're going to get. Plus 14. Perfect. Yeah, negative and a negative gives us a positive, so we're going to write plus. And then lastly, we're going to have negative minus eight. Eight. Yep, negative times a positive gives us a negative. We write our minus out. Can't combine any of that. We have m and n, and then a number. Can't do that. How about the last one? Essentially, what happens on the last example? Put a minus sign. You just change the signs. That's really all that's going to happen. That negative is going to change every sign inside. The way you can think about that, if you'd like to show the math on it, this really is like a negative 1. When we distribute negative 1, it doesn't change any of the numbers themselves, but just change the signs. So negative 1 times 5x is negative 5x. Negative 1 times positive 2y is negative or minus 2y. And then negative 1 times negative 3z with positive plus 3z. Yeah, that's as far as we can go on those. Do you guys feel okay about this? How many people do feel just fine? Are you ready to step it up a little bit? Sure. No. The answer to that question is always <laughs> yes. Yes, we are ready. Well, that's what you hear. Yeah. That's what I hear. <laughs> I have a very selective hearing, my friend. Right. So we're going to do some more on this stuff. I'm going to start building these problems up until they look kind of complex. Now, the thing you got to realize is that we're not going to be doing anything different than distributing and combining like terms. That's all we're doing. It's just I'm adding more to it at once. Are you, are you ready to tackle this problem? We'll try. I think you can do it there. We can do that one, right? Well, now I'm just going to, that's a plus, yeah. Now I'm just going to keep adding things onto it. So what would happen if I do this and then subtract 15? That's all I'm doing. I'm just going to add more and more to these problems. So that would be negative 15, right? Minus 15 at the very end. We'll, we'll talk about that in just a second, okay? So. We're going to treat this like any other distribution problem that we have. We certainly have to get rid of the parentheses. My question to you is this. Let's look up at the board here real quick. I know some of you are doing this on your own. That's great. I'm glad for you. Uh, I want to know, does this 4 get distributed to the 2 and the 8? Just the 2, just the 8? The 2, the 8, and the 15? Which one? 2, two and eight. What about to the 15? No. 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 Why not? Not yeah, it's different than this, right? This was all in parentheses. That's why it went to that third term. But here, this 4 is just going to be distributed here and here. Let's do that part first. We'll distribute just what's in the parentheses, and then we'll combine like terms. So our ideas are distribute and then combine like terms. Distribute first, then combine like terms. Let's do that together using our, our method that we just learned. Can you please tell me the first term I get when I distribute? Eight. Oh, eight. Eight. 
I like I like the eight. Bow eight. Had to make sure on that one. Uh, so we got our eight for sure, and then what's the next term we're going to get? Plus thirty-two x. Plus good because it's positive. Thirty-two x. Okay, and then we're done, right? So we, got minus minus 15. Minus yeah. we have that minus 15 at the end of this. So I want you to notice that really what we have here is basically just two problems in one, uh, both of which you've done before now. You've done the distribution. You've done distribution now. We've, we've done all that. But this is just a combined like terms problem, which we also done in this section just two days ago. So question, can you combine some? Do you have like terms here? Yeah. Yeah. Oh, we got the negative 15 and the 8. Sure. That means we can combine So combine like terms, 8 and negative 15 gives me what? <laughs> Cross them out. And how about the 32x? Is there anything with the 32x? No. no. So we just write plus 32x, exactly what we have there. After the answer? Well, can we combine those any further? No. no. I think you're done. <laughs> so we distribute first like we normally do. Just make sure you combine your like terms. Yeah. Just scan through them. Does the negative always? No, you mean like here? Yeah, like if we take two minus seven. It could, yeah. We're going to get to that when we talk about standard form. For right now, I'm really, I'm really not caring that much about about that form. Okay. So either way is fine right now. I um, mean, if you really did look for x's first, you'd have 32x first, right? You'd have that, and then you would have looked at those, and that would give you negative seven, and you would write minus seven there. Can you guys identify that these are, in fact, the same thing? Yes. They're exactly the same. Yeah, it doesn't matter what order uh, so for right now. Okay. All right. So on either one will be right. That's right. When you get on into a later math, um, you're going to find out there's something called standard form for polynomials, which means that you're going to have a certain way you write things. And typically, the way you write things is in descendant exponential form. So you can have like an exponent, exponent of 3, 2, 1, and then a number. So that's, that's typically how we write that. We'll get to that later. Okay, I want to get to one more today together. I'll give you a couple do on your own, and then we'll be out of here. We could all do that one, right? Right? Right. Yes. Yes. right. Can we do this one too? Yeah. yeah. What you doing, Mr. Brennan? I know, right? Yeah. Listen, it's nothing different from things we've already done. It's just now you have two different pieces to it. So I want to go through this step by step with you, show you exactly how we're going to do this problem, um, and I'll give you a couple doing your own that you can practice. So when we look at this problem, the first thing I'm doing, honestly, I'm ignoring this part. I'm looking just at this piece, which means distribution. We've seen things like this before. What number are we distributing, ladies and gentlemen? Negative 2x. So I'm going to circle that negative 2. That's what's getting distributed. So far, so good? Yep. We're ignoring this whole part. Mm -hmm. What's my first term going to be? Negative, negative 2x. Perfect. What's my next term going to be? Positive Five. 10. Plus a couple different answers. Why, why plus 10? Why plus? Two, two negatives. Yeah, we're treating the signs with the numbers. So negative 2, negative 5. We're treating like a negative 5. You're going to get the positive or plus 10. You guys agree that this part is the same as that part, right? Correct. Yes. We've already done stuff like that. That was 20 minutes ago. Now we get to distribute this. Here's what I need you to do. Please watch carefully. This isn't going to make such a difference because that's a plus right now. However, that is, that's a minus. This will make a huge difference. I always want you, this is why I had to do this, to circle the number in front of the parentheses with the sign, with it. So here we circled not 2 but negative 2. Here we're going to circle 4 with its sign, with that so plus. We're over. Yeah. Okay. Same thing. All right. So we're circling that number with the sign. Are you clear on this? Yes. So it has to go with it. And we do the same exact thing. We have positive 4 times positive 2x, how much is that? Positive 8x. So if we have positive 8x, please watch carefully, here's what you do. You never write two signs. You never write two signs. If you got positive 8, 
what I put plus, down here, plus eight, you're going to put the log of plus 8x. So positive 8x translates to a plus 8x. Nod your head if you're with me on this, folks. Yeah. Good, okay, that's important, especially when we get to the negative. Okay, we'll do that next time, but I want to make sure you see this here. Then we'll do positive 4 times positive 2. How much do we get there? 8. eight. So we'll put plus 8. And is there anything else that we can do? So we got like two like terms. We do. I see a negative 2x and what else? Uh, yeah, yeah, eight. Eight. That's going to give us 6x. Good. Switching back to the addition rule. That's great. And then plus lastly, eight. yeah, I see the positive 10, the positive 8. That's plus 18. Can't do anything. You're done. Yeah, you cannot combine those at all. Would you raise your hand feel okay with what we talked about today? Good. That's very good. All right, so as I was saying, we're going to do an example. We're going to build these problems up until they look really complex, but we we're realizing if we stick to the process of distribution with combined like terms, really they're a non-issue. So let's look at this problem. realized about yesterday was that this is seriously like just three problems in one. If we know how to distribute and we know how to combine like terms, it's not even it's not even a big deal. So when we look at this problem, we're going to ignore the back half, we're going to look at the front half. Uh, ladies and gentlemen, what number am I distributing from the first expression here? Negative 7. So it's not just 7, I have to circle that number with the sign, we did that last time. So we'll circle this, we'll distribute it. It goes to both those terms in there. Can you all tell me what's the first term I'm going to have? Negative 7x. Perfect. And then we're learning also the shortcut to this. We're learning that if we take the signs with those terms and multiply them, the signs will take care of themselves. So we really just do this multiplication term by term. So I'm thinking about this as negative 7. I'm going to consider this one to be negative 4. I'm going to consider that sign to be part of that number. So when we multiply that, folks, how much am I going to get? Plus 28. Yeah, why plus? Because two negatives. Okay. And we're not going to write 20. Explain the difference between this and what I should write. Why don't I just write that? Because that's positive 28, right? Well, you won't have a sign there. Good. Very good. Right. Otherwise, yeah, it would be, right? It would be completely different. I have a question. Um, sure. Yesterday when we were doing columns, like, there was a negative right there where, like, say negative 4, but instead of, like, you put the negative on the bottom where the where the is at, and then you multiply it. You mean from here to here how this go from a yeah. minus to a plus? That's what we're talking about right now. It's a good question. What we're doing is we're considering these signs to go with the numbers. So if I'm looking at this one, yeah, it says minus four. What we're doing is because we can write this as x plus negative four. Remember we did that, we changed minuses to plus negatives. Because we can do that, we consider this minus to be a negative, just for the time being. That allows you to do the term by term multiplication, the signs go with those numbers, they take care of themselves. So when we're doing this, how this is changing from a minus to a plus, let me ask you. Since we're distributing negative seven, and this is a negative four, what's negative seven times negative four? That's why I'm writing that plus. So that makes that, that change that minus into a plus sign. Does that kind of answer your question? All right, so that's. I know that, but. Sure, that was I was showing you the long way to do that. I was showing you that there's two options for you. You can either do it this way, which is it's pretty quick, right? We just multiply term by term. If you really want to, you could show negative seven times x like that, minus negative seven times four. And you're gonna see that if we do it this way, it is gonna come with the same answer. We have the negative seven x. We have the minus negative 28. But then when we did this, guys on the right hand side of the room, what was the minus and negative? What did that change to? So we'd write that plus. What we're doing basically is eliminating the need for this process by multiplying term by term. That's the idea there. Not sure if you guys are with me on that. Okay, good deal. All right, so good question. Thanks for that one. What's the next thing we do on the problem? Sure, yeah, we also have to get rid of those parentheses, so that's great. It's really, it's just like three problems in one. We're distributing the first part, we're distributing the second part, after that, 
hey, combine some like terms, it'll be good. Now, can you tell me what I do before I start distributing? What do I, what do I want you to show me on this problem? Circles, uh, plus three, three. Okay. So we're not just looking at the three, we're looking at whatever sign's in front of that three. In this case, it's the plus, so we're treating it like a positive three. Okay, y'all tell me, what do we get when we distribute the first term, please? Yes. What am I going to write? Plus three. Good. Okay, and it goes to both of them, so let's do the next one. What's the next thing I do? Negative three. So we got negative three, what are we going to write down? Minus three. And we're done, right? No. Why not? Combine like terms. So let's have someone who hasn't spoken yet before today. What like terms do we have up here? So when we do that, we circle them with those signs. That was a great job, you guys. And we're going to use those addition rules. So you have to be very good at changing back and forth between multiplication rules, which you're using for distribution, and now those addition rules, which we use for the combining like terms. So how many x's do we have? We have negative 7x and the plus 3x. That gives us? Negative Perfect. Cross these out as we go. Anything else? 20. Yeah. Good, yeah, we know that any time we have numbers up there, they're automatically like terms. What's that leave us with? <coughs> Can we add those? No. Why not? Yeah, we got a variable, we got a number. We're done, that's as far as we can go. So this is kind of where we left off yesterday. What I'd like you to do, go ahead and do one on your own to really practice this. I'll be walking around. If you need help, let me know, because now is the time to get that before we go any further, okay? So let's try this one. So we're looking for parentheses first. Whatever we distribute, we distribute. We circle the number with the sign, make sure it goes to both those terms inside there. After you've gotten rid of those parentheses by distribution, then we combine like terms. questions as I circulate in the room, why can't we solve for x in this problem? You guys should be able to answer that right now. Why can't we go any further on the negative 4x plus 25? Because it's not a equation. Okay, what makes, not a variable. Well, what makes something an equation? It has an equal sign. Those are the only things you can actually solve. So if you don't have an equal sign, we can't ever say how much x equals. We can't evaluate it, which means I can give you a number to plug in. But what we can't ever do is take this problem right here and say, oh, x equals uh, 25 over 4. It doesn't make any sense to do that. We have this, it's not equal to anything. Does that make sense to you? Yeah. So in case we, unless we have that equation, we're done with our manipulation at this point. All right, let's go ahead and let's try this problem out for us. What's the first thing we're going to do on our problem here? Circle that. Yeah. We do want to circle that. And you're going to see why in just a bit, why we circle this number. And then we distribute it. Okay, folks, we should get negative 9 times positive x. Hopefully, you got negative 9x, did you? 
The next one we gotta be rock solid on. This is one, the first part is where people are, everyone's gonna get that right. The second part is where those signs become an issue, and sometimes we have a little foul up there. So we gotta be real sure, if we're gonna multiply negative nine times what we're gonna consider to be negative one, what are we gonna get out of that? Plus nine. Perfect, yeah, great. How many people got the plus nine? Good, that's really good, okay. That's important. Well, we're done with the first part. Let's move to the second part. Of course, we'll circle our plus four. We'll distribute that to both of our terms inside. Uh, first term, what's that give me? Plus four. Good, so we notice when we're saying plus, or positive, we're actually writing the plus. We're changing that to our, our plus 12x. And then lastly, we'll do our positive four times our negative four and get how much? Minus 16. Yeah, that's exactly right. It's minus because when you multiply a positive times a negative, you're going to get the negative, right? And this is the whole idea of changing between a plus minus or a plus negative into a minus itself. So we're kind of going backwards of what we did with our subtraction rules a couple sections ago. That's, that's the idea. So after we've distributed, that's when you check for any like terms. Do we have any like terms? Negative 9x and positive 12x. Sure, let's do that. If we combine them, use the addition rule, we get different signs, subtract, sign the bigger number, gives you yeah, three x. Perfect. Positive. And lastly, we'll have a positive 9, negative 16, that gives me what? Negative minus I'm done. Can't combine them. Can't combine them. I feel pretty good about this so far. Do you remember what would happen if I put just a negative in front of parentheses like this? Do you remember what that does? The negative goes with... What number's really out in front of that? One. Okay, so let's add some more stuff on this and see if this works out the same way. So how about... How about that one? If you remember from last time, we said, yeah, that, that negative out front, what it really means is a negative one that we have to distribute across both those terms. And essentially, basically, basically what it does, it just changes the sign inside the parentheses. Hey, ladies and gentlemen, is it going to change this sign? No. Why doesn't it change this sign? It's in front of the parentheses. Okay, so right here, we're just looking at this negative across the parentheses. These numbers, they're not going to change. So when we rewrite our problem, sure, we're going to have, write a one. What are we going to have first off? Negative x. One. Negative okay, somebody else, what are we going to have after that? Plus or minus? Why minus? Okay. The plus 7x and the plus 8, those aren't going to change. So those are there. Take a close look at that, guys. Sometimes people get a little bit, a little bit iffy on this. Are you okay on why this became negative x and why this, especially this one, became minus 9? Yeah. Nod your head if you're okay with that. Sure. Okay. Good. We're almost done. We've got to combine some like terms. I see a negative x. I see a plus 7x. We're circling those with those signs. How much does that give us? 6x. Good deal. Mm -hmm. And lastly, I see the minus 9 or negative 9 and the positive or plus 8. What do we give? Negative 1. Negative. So what are we going to write? Give one of these a try on your own, then we'll start building this up more and more, okay? You guys are looking good so far on this stuff, too. If you can master this, when you can not see, Two classes down the road for you. You'd be rock solid in the first two chapters for sure. That's good news.
Okay, let's do this thing. Here's how we're looking at the problem. The first thing we look for when we're simplifying these expressions, we look for any parentheses and anything we need to distribute. In our case here, for sure, we've got that negative, or if you want to think about it, we got the negative one. We got to circle that thing and multiply times each of the terms inside of our parentheses. What it does, if you just have the negative one outside, the negative, it's going to change every sign inside. So here we, we do have the negative y, but we're also going to get negative one times positive one, that gives you negative one again. So you should be writing a minus one there. Then the plus three y and the minus 12, that really doesn't change. Raise your hand if you made it that far. That's, fa that's fantastic. So you understand that negative sign, that's really good. After that, we'll look for any like terms to combine. Of course, we have a few. We've got the y, the three y. If I combine the negative y with the three y, I use the addition rules. Addition rule says you have different signs here. You're subtracting, you're keeping the sign of the bigger number, you're gonna get Two y. Yeah, that's right, 2y. Finally, same thing for any numbers that you have. I'm noticing the negative 1. I'm noticing the negative 12. Those have the same sign. By addition rule, we're going to add those together, but we're going to keep the common sign. So right here at the very end, we're going to have minus 13. You can't combine those. They're not like terms, so you're done. You're done. We're going to make a little bit, a little bit more. Ramp this up a little bit. Isn't this fun? Aren't you guys excited? Yeah, I could, I could see it on your happy, smiling faces. You're loving this. Tell you what, we'll do two more together. I'll give you a couple to do on your own to really cement this in your heads. We'll talk about perimeter and area one more time, and we'll end our section today, okay? So we got this problem, looks real similar to the last ones we've done. We have a few different variables, unlike our previous examples, but let's see if we can accomplish doing this in some, some, some of a similar way to before. What number am I going to distribute first? Seven. Seven. Okay. Let's do that together. Can you tell me what I'm going to get when I distribute the 7 across my parentheses there? 14. Uh -huh. And somebody else, what's the next one? Negative 28B. Okay. So if it's negative 28B, what am I going to write? Perfect. I'm guessing y'all are okay with that one, yeah? Because we've done that, that several times before. Here's the big deal. I, I need you to watch carefully. Even put your pencils down if that distracts you. I want you to watch real careful on this one. The reason why I have you do this step, because some of you are like, why, why do we even circle that? What, why does it even matter? Check it out. In a problem like this one, if you distribute just the three, just the three. Something bad's going to happen with your problem. You're not going to get the correct answer at the end. In fact, you're going to be way off because you're going to combine the wrong terms. Why I have you circle the number with the sign is because any time you have like a minus three like this one, that minus can actually be treated like a negative. Do you, you, hopefully you remember this. You remember how any time a minus, we have a minus, we could write this as plus negative, right? Do you remember that? We could write this as plus negative three which means it's actually negative three, which you're distributing. So when we circle the number with the sign, we're indicating to ourselves that it's really not the positive three I'm distributing, it's actually a negative three. So that negative three is gonna be going to both of these terms. Nigel, have you understood that part? Jeff, question? Um, what I used to do for like, uh, from, well, I mean like, I don't know, but anyway, I would just break down the minus and then do the timesing, it still comes out with a negative. Like, for the first one it does, but not the second one. It would be 3 times negative 2b is so be negative 6. That's going to give you the wrong answer, man. It would be? Yeah, honestly. Oh, yeah, I see, because it's 2. Uh, okay. Right. If we're not taking that's that... That's what I used to do. I must have been doing it wrong, man. <laughs> hey, now we're going to do it right. Yeah. No big deal. So we're, we're still learning here, yeah, but the, the idea is that negative, it has to go with the 3. If we just bring it down, which a lot of people do, you're going you're gonna to get this right. I guarantee everybody in this class is going to get this part right. Negative... Uh, well, I, I just got it wrong, actually. Right <laughs> Ironic. Negative 12a. Everybody's going to get that part. Because if you just bring it down, you're going to get ne negative 12a, right? It's the next one I'm yeah, worried it's about. That's why I have you circle it. We do negative 3 times positive 4a. Of course, we're going to get negative 12a. However, watch the next one for me, okay? When I take negative 3 times negative 2b, what's negative 3 times negative 2b? Plus right, so what are we going to write? Plus 6. That's the correct answer. Yeah. Okay. 
that part right here, I look two places on your test. I honestly do. I look at the end answer, and I look right here. If you have the end answer right, I know you know how to do this problem. If you have the end answer wrong, I'm going to look right here to see if you understand the concept of distribution or not. If you have a plus here like you're supposed to, I know you, that you just made a simple math error. I give you some partial credit. Does that make sense? If you have this one wrong with a minus sign, I know you really don't get that you need to distribute that negative. Does that make sense? And then you get no credit because you, that's, that's the whole thing what we're learning right now. So what I'm having you do, I have to have you circle this because I have to have you know that sign gets distributed with that number. Raise your hand if you understood that. That was a big point, one of the bigger things we talked about today. Okay, good. So we have these signs correct. We've got our negative 12a, we've got our plus 6b. Hey, we're good to go for the rest of it. Let's just combine some like terms, do that on your own, and let's see what you get. Okay, so like terms time. I see the 14a, I see a minus or negative 12a, that's going to give me how much? 2a. And lastly, I see the minus 28b, I see the plus 6b, we're going to get what out of that? How much? Perfect. Did you get that too? Let's try one more together. I want you to see one thing about this problem, and then I'll let you go and have a couple on your own. <clears throat> this is about as bad as I can make it. If you guys can do this, you know how to do this stuff, which is, which is good. I think you're at this point right now. Um, really, when you think about it, I just said as bad as I can make it. Is it really that, is it really that bad? Uh, as long as you treat it as like three problems within one problem, it's not that bad. We're distributing a couple times, and we're combining like terms. No problem. One thing I can't have you do, though. I want you to think back to your order of operations, all right? Should I be subtracting right here? What comes before subtraction? Parentheses. Well, ad addition if it was there. Parentheses do, first of all, very good. And how about, what else? Exponents. Exponents. Do we have no exponents, but what else? Do we have any multiplication here? Do you remember that any time you have a number next to parentheses, that means multiply? Okay, so. It, when you get a problem like this, I know it's, it's very easy to just look at that and go, oh, 4 minus 3, that's easy, that's 1. I love math, you know, because that's, that's kind of nice. You just do that right away, but you can't do that. And the reason why you can't do that is your subtraction is going to come way after your multiplication. Uh, or multiplication has to come first. So don't get caught in the trick of, oh, I just subtract this first, it makes my problem look better, and then I distribute. I'm not sure if you're with me on that one. So are we going to subtract first? No. So I have a question then. Yeah. Is, is that, since we don't uh, subtract that first, is that a negative 3? We're going to treat that like a negative 3. All That's right. exactly right. So let's go through the same process we just did with the previous problem. We'll look at this thing right here. What are we going to distribute first? What's the first thing here? Negative 3 to right. 2 what? Not just the 3, but remember, I'm having to circle the, the number with the sign. That negative 3 has to go to both those terms. Let's do this together and see what we get. Uh, what's the first thing I need to write, folks? Four. Why the 4? Yeah, we haven't done anything with it. Might as well be there. And then we're going to distribute. What's the first term we get when we distribute? Perfect. Yeah, this is the one that everyone's going to get right, right? I mean, if you just bring down the minus, you're going to have that part. Let's work on the second part. That's the more important part of this, where people make mistakes. But you're not going to. You're going to get what? Explain why it's plus. Very good. Cool. That's exactly right. If you guys can do that, you're going to be set. Next thing we are going to distribute is what? Let's circle that. We'll go to both these terms. First term we get? Perfect. And second thing we get? Well, what was that? All right. Let's see if we can combine some like terms because we just distributed that perfectly. Hmm? We're multiplying. Yeah, that 4 times 2, that's giving us that 8. Are there any like terms with the 4? No. What are we going to do with that 4 then? Okay. Well, they kind of just hung out the whole problem. We didn't even use that. 
I'll circle it though, I'll cross it out to make sure I know that I took care of it. Uh, what's some other like terms that you see up here? With what? Five and twelve. Twelve eggs. Combine it, tell me what we get. Six eggs. I mean plus six eggs. Which one? Plus six eggs. Why is it plus and not minus? Because the twelve is higher than the six. Okay, we're using addition rules, not multiplication rules. So if it had been multiplication, yeah, negative times a positive is a negative. But with addition rules, subtract, sign a bigger number, you get plus 6x. Lastly, I'm seeing my b's. Got 3b, got 8b, we get plus 11b. I like it. Can we combine anything over there? No. No, not really. It's like saying you got $4, 6 xylophones, and 11 bananas. How much do you have? Four dollars. <laughs> you can't combine those. I've got, uh, let's see, twenty-one dollars of the bananas. That doesn't make sense. Sounds kind of fun. Are you ready to try a couple on your own? Yeah. Let's see if we can handle this. So I'd like you to do this one. Let's start with 8c minus 4 times 3c minus 8 minus 5 and then c plus 4. Work on that one. I'm going to write one more on the board for you and you take care of that afterwards. Make a note if you'd like on, on your home or on your, your notes right now. Some of these problems are going to show up on your second test. For sure, you're going to have some of those problems. If you need help, let me know. Now's the time. I'll be walking around. Lots of good work. Make sure you circle the number in front of the parentheses with the sign and take that to both of those terms to the side. We're going to go in about 30 seconds, so try to wrap these problems up. Hey, by the way, is it okay to have more than two like terms at a time? I hope so, because that's what you should get on the first problem, right? Because you see C's there. If you're having trouble with those, those C's that you have, do them two at a time. That's fine. All right, let's see what we have on this problem. What are we going to do with that 8C? Does that do anything at the beginning of our problem? Here? No. All right, let's just bring that on down. What are we going to distribute with our, second, or our first parentheses? The negative 4 with the 3C. Great. So I'm circling that negative 4. When I distribute it, I hope on your paper you got the correct answer, which is negative 12C, and then what? Positive. Plus Positive. or minus 32? Positive. Positive. Good. Yeah, that's perfect. And then over here on our second set of parentheses, yeah, it's minus 5C because I'm going to distribute that negative 5 to both those terms. So minus 5C. And then lastly, what are we going to get? Positive uh, 
plus 20. Plus or minus? Careful now. <coughs> I need oh, a show yeah. of hands. Tell me we got exactly the other paper. Good, good deal. Remember how to do this when you get your homework and your test, you're going to be just fine. You okay? Okay. Lastly, we'll combine some like terms, but when we look at our like terms, not only do we see an 8C, not only do we see a minus 12C or negative 12C, we also see this negative 5C. It's okay to have more than two like terms at a time. Uh, what you can do is, if you're very good at the addition rule, just do this one, leave it in your head, and then stick this one on the, on the side afterwards. Or you can do this part first and then combine like terms afterwards. I'll show you that way so you really see what I'm doing here. So if I combine these, of course, 8C and negative 12C gives me negative 4C. You with me on this? Then I'll have the plus 32 and the minus 5C minus 20. If you haven't already taken care of the 5C, now you can do it in this step. We have our minus 4C, we've got our minus 5C, same sign, add them together, keep the common sign, you get negative 9C. And the numbers, the positive 32 and the negative 20, that's going to combine, they have different signs, subtract, sign of the bigger number gives us plus 12. Plus 12 is the right one. That's as far as we can go. Did you make it that far? Good deal. Yeah, I like it. Okay, last problem. Um, perimeter and area. Are we going to subtract the 6 minus the 4? Is that the first step that we should do? Oh, no. No, of course not. Our multiplication comes first. Order of operations stuff. So the 6 will leave. Negative 4 gets distributed. We should be getting negative 8x and positive 4 or plus 4y. Did you get minus 8x and plus 4y? Good deal. Then we'll distribute our positive 3. We'll get plus 3x. We'll get minus 12y. And all that's left to do is combine some like terms and we're done. The 6, we really don't have any like terms with that, so we're going to keep writing that 6. We do have the minus 8, we do have the plus 3, I almost said plus 3, plus 3x. What do we get? Minus 5x. So those are gone. And lastly, we got a 4y, minus 12y, what do we get of that one? Negative 8y. Sure. Can we combine any of this stuff? No. You check, you double check, but no, we can't. We're good to go. That's as far as we can go. Do you feel okay with combining like terms like this? Distribution, combine like terms? Good, all right. Let's see if we can apply this to two quick problems and we'll call it a day today, all right? Do you remember what perimeter means? When you add the distance around? Say that again? When you add the distance around? Right, so like the perimeter of this room would be if you walked around this room, right? and added up how many feet you walked. It's like we did this example earlier, it's how much baseboard you'd buy for your, your house, right? If you were doing baseboards at your house, baseboards would be your perimeter. Uh, how much feet you're gonna have to go down to Lowe's or Home Depot, hopefully Lowe's, because Jimmy Johnson, you know, Lowe's, whatever. Yeah. NASCAR, anybody? Yeah. Anybody? Nothing? Yes. Oh. I don't like driving my junior van. They drive on road courses too, they make rights and stuff. Anyway, it doesn't really matter. So you go down to Home Depot or Lowe's, you get your baseboards, that's a perimeter. If you were trying to re-carpet your floor, that's a surface area. So the area would be the length times the width, the perimeter would be you add up all the distance. Let's see if we can do a perimeter on this figure. Well, let's see. Refresh my memory. What's perimeter mean again? Space. What was it? What this is around. Well, what's our total? You add the sides. You add the sides. Yeah, that's our total distance around. Can we add these sides up? Yeah. Yeah. yeah, even though there's x's, that's not a problem for us. Let's see if we can add these up. Uh, in order to do this, what's my expression I'm going to have to write? 5x plus 4x plus 3x. Sure. So each of my sides, I have 5x, 4x, 3x. Let's add those, up, those all up together. How much are we going to get? That's our expression for the perimeter. So even though you don't get like a whole answer, like uh, 34 feet or something like that, we have this in terms of x's. So this depends on how much we plug in for x, what our perimeter is going to be. But using the variables, it's, it's fine. We just add those sides up just like we would for any other perimeter problem, and we're good to go. Let's say you had a room. This is, this is supposed to be a rectangular room. Let's say that this is uh, 12 feet 
and this is 8 feet. 12 feet and 8 feet. What's your area? How much is that? 96 feet. 96, 96 what? Square. Oh, remember about the square feet? We had square units on that? This would be 96 square feet. Could you find the perimeter? Yes. Is the perimeter 20? No. No. What is the perimeter? 40. Why isn't the perimeter just this plus this? Oh, okay, so if you're given two sides of a rectangle, you need to know that we're adding all four of those sides up for perimeter. Area, however, is just this length times this height. Let's see if I make this a little bit different, if we can solve it the same way. So let's say this isn't 12 anymore. Uh, this is, let's make it 10 to make it nice. And this isn't 8 anymore. This is 2x minus 1. Can you find the area? Yes. Okay, how? Yeah. I'm still listening to you, Rachel. I got you. Yeah, for sure. Just like this was 12 and that was 8, we multiplied 12 times 8, right? Now it's 10 and 2x minus 1. The operation of finding area doesn't change. The values change. We have a variable now. But hey, that is 10 times 2x minus 1, right? That's how, that's this representation. Can we make this a little bit simpler? Can we simplify that? Yeah, we just spent the whole time doing that. How would I do it? What's that word, by the way, that you're using to multiply? Yeah. Distribute or distributive property or distribution. That's what we're doing. Very good. So we circle that number with the sign that's positive, so we're going to get what out of that? 20. Yeah. We're done. That's the expression that we have for area. Again, it's going to depend on how much x is to whether we can find actual area or not. Um, this would be square units to whatever units they give you on the problem. Would you raise your hand feel okay with distribution and perimeter and area? And you had a question. For the, for the area, for the area, that would be a different formula. Uh, we're not quite there yet. When you find that, you want to see it right now? The area of a triangle, what you'd have to find is this height. Base times height. Yeah, and what you do for a triangle is you take the base, 5x, times the height, which isn't 3x. It's going to be a little less than 3x. You'd multiply those things, and then you divide it by 2. Uh, because a triangle is basically half of a rectangle. That's the, the theory that you're using on that thing. So we're not quite there. We might get there someday. Good question, though. Any other questions? All right, guys, we're going to end there today, but hang out.